Hello, Serge here from the Backyard Driving Range. All right. I have a question today that came in from Bill Salmon. And Bill says, Don, I have been utilizing the PPGS for two years. Until recently, I wasn't consistent taking the club back up the tree, in the mitt and up the tree, which is the absolute takeaway concept to the peak performance golf swing. Recently, I saw a man and a lady touring pro practicing, starting the backswing, stopping when the club was just by their right foot, making sure the respective hands and club was on plane. That means he's talking about they were basically stopping right about there. All right, as you know, we say you turn only to the toe line. So the catcher's bit is out here. If I take this and I, I put this alignment arrow on the ground, this is my aiming line, all right? And this is my toe line. Okay? They, the catcher's mitt is just about right back in here. You go in the catcher's mitt and we turn only to the toe line. After the, once I reach the toe line, it's all straight up. There's no more turn. All right? We turn only to the toe line all up. And then conversely, when I get to the top and I swing down and I hit the ball, and we get, we're down in the forward catcher's mitt, which is the same opposite side on that side for reaction is a reaction. And I get my, now my right arm, my trailing arm, my back arm, which would be the left arm for a lefty, would be what? Once it reaches the toe line, then I'm up so there's no more turn, and that gets me finishing and with the recoil and relax, finishing square to my target, not somewhere over there in la-la land to the left, or it would be to the right for a lefty, okay? That's what he's talking about. He's talking about he's, they come here and they stop right there. They're learning their toe line, all right? I'd like to think that they were probably swinging vertical because, again, rotational players, that does, the toe line doesn't mean anything. They're just going to keep on turning and get behind it, right? And this is no longer over the toe line. It's, it's in the sacred burial ground. So I got a feeling they were probably, probably trying to go somewhat vertical. Recently, I saw a man and lady touring pro practicing, starting the backswing, stopping when the club was just by their right foot, making sure, so they were right-handed golfers, making sure their respective hands and club was on plane. Then they continued their swing and flushed the shot every time. The same technique works well with people who are having trouble with the PPGS swing. I'm sure you have seen this technique, technique before. It's helping me to be more consistent. Correct alignment is a must for the shot to fly toward the target. Thank you. Couldn't have said it any better, Bill. If this is my intended, if this is my intended aiming, my target's right down here in this line. Let me put it more at the camera. This is my intended, but my alignment's over here, and I make a perfect swing. It's going down the parallel line of this club, which is which is out there someplace. So intended and actual can become two things and change. You can have perfect alignment, perfect shots from bad alignment, which will give your actual shot off target. And that's where the big dilemma comes from. You make great shots that are going in the wrong place because you weren't lined up to your intended parallel left for, for a right-hander and parallel right for a left-hander, you were not lined up parallel correctly to have your actual shot go to your intended spot. Just a thought. You might demonstrate and pass this on if you agree. I absolutely agree. Heck, I mean, for years there's a number of people out on tour did it. Uh, Mike Ware, when he used to be vertical, he used to do that all the time. He, he's a lefty, right? So he's standing on this side and he'd come back and, and, and he'd get over here and he'd do this and then he'd start going up. And when did Mike Weir get in trouble? He got in trouble when he, when he went to stack and tilt. All right? And that was about five years ago. And sad to say, I mean, here's a guy that's won nine or 11 times out there in the PJ Tour, including the Masters, and he's got trouble. I mean, I think he's used up all his exceptions. And right now, he's, out, he's playing on past champion status, I think, this year. And, and uh, if you go check it out, he's not making a whole lot of cuts. And it's sad. I mean, this guy was, one, was a world-class player, one of the best in the world, the best Canada. They, I think he's pretty much, when it's heyday, they said he was the best that ever, that ever lived in Canada. Uh, or if at least in a triumphant with, with Mo Norman and, and George Knudsen. Okay? And so, and now he's having trouble playing because he went to stack and tilt. He started playing on his left side, and I guarantee you, when he was stack and tilt and going like this, he, his, hands, his hands and club were no longer over his, his, his right arm and hand, his forward hand and arm were not, and shaft were not over his toe line anymore. He needs to get back to that. I mean, I could fix Mike up in 20, 30 minutes if he wants to come and talk to me. But he got killed when he went, in, when he went into that to get off of it. And if you recall, go back and check when they, when they put him on, the, on the, uh, the, the uh, President's Cup team and Gary Player was the pro, uh, the captain. It's, it, Gary Player said it. It's documented. You can find it. He said, Mike, I'm going to only let you play if you start, going, if you start lifting your club up and, not, and, and getting your weight and staying behind the ball, not, not trying to play golf in front of the ball. See, when, you, when, you, when you're whatever we are, and I'll do it right-handed, if you go this way, 
You're on top of it. That's the whole thing about your chest covering the ball. We're, we're behind the ball at impact. Our arms are stretching out. They're straightening out and swinging it. Just like baseball players. They're into this position. Tennis players hit the ball. They're behind it. If a tennis player got ahead of the ball, if a pitcher, if a pitcher got here and, and got his shoulders too far ahead of the ball, man, he'd throw it up in the air or swing it into the ground. You've got to be behind it, just like throwing a punch. Nobody throws a punch from in front of themselves. They throw a punch getting, getting from behind and into everything square. And Gary Player told him, you got to get back to, you got to get back to, to get vertical and be behind the ball at impact. And I think right now the problem with Mike is, I don't get, you don't get to see him much on TV anymore, right? Because uh, they only show the top three, four, five guys are, are really, are really named people who were, who were out there. And if they're anywhere near a camera, they're going to show them even if they're a big shot and not playing good. So. That's just my public service announcement. It's be nice to see a lot more other people. How are we going to get to learn new players if they don't show them except when they're in the lead or something? So uh, I'll end that public service announcement there. But, yes, I agree with this. I think it's a great thing. The only thing I disagree with is, is you don't stop and then keep going. You find it, you come back, and then you keep going. Because if you stop and go, that's breaking the cycle. It's breaking the, the flow, the momentum. And, and the golf swing is called continuity of flow. Once you start, it gets everything moving consistently together so that all the different things, the sequence of the movement and everything else, the muscles all stretch with the, the different muscle groups and the movements of the different parts of the body. All stretch consistently in one way and then they, and when they fire, they all start reacting the other way. For every action, there's a consistent reaction. Well, if I stop and then I, and then I go, I've broken the motion. I've, the muscles have lost that continuity of that consistent stretching. It's like just pulling that rubber band. I want to keep it consistent so when I let it go, boom. But if I just go like this, a rubber band still might stretch but it's just one band we got a whole bunch of rubber bands connected in our body so once we start once we start the system going once we start all the different unique indiv individual uh, points of the body moving we want them all to keep moving and stretching right it's just like a train when that, when that engine moves and, and it locks up the second car and then, and then, and then, and then, and then, then it locks up the third and the fourth eventually that whole train will all be moving right in a row and then they'll start stopping right in a row from the, from the other way so the same thing happens here. It's called a kinetic chain. You don't want to, once you get that kinetic chain going to stay fluid and flowing and graceful and elegant, you, you, hey, you couldn't be a great waltzing dancer if you, kept, if you kept stopping. Once you go, the waltzing has to keep everything going. So you've got to keep that kinetic chain going. So it all pulls one way and then when it goes the other way, boom! They all snap back the other way, so we have equal for every action. There's an equal and opposite reaction. So yes, I love this. I'm learning the point where it's time to go up, right? In the mid, up the tree, I'm learning it. Never get behind the toe line because everything behind the toe line on both sides of you, in the backswing and in the forward swing, if you get inside the toe line, you are in the sacred burial ground, the SBG. And we know that, that in the sacred burial ground, you may stand in it, but if you swing in it, you're dead. And again, golf is like life. What goes around, comes around. What goes straight up, comes straight down and back up. And, if, and this is great for finding the up point. We never turn. We turn only to the toe line. And then it goes up in the back swing, and it goes toe line in the forward swing, because we're intermittent up the chair in that side and the toe line. We never get behind the toe line in the back swing or the forward swing. And when you do that, basically you are swinging your club and your arms inside this, these two lines, relatively speaking. And if you can keep your club and your arms and hands inside these two lines, and they're lined up correctly at the target, parallel left for a left hand, uh, for a right hander, parallel right for a, a left hander. And you stay, and you keep your hands, arms, and clubs in that line. I call this the aiming alley. You keep the hands, arms, and clubs in the aiming alley. You got a good chance your ball is going to stay pretty darn close to this aiming alley and finish close to the flag, in the fairway or on the greens into the flag. And when you start doing that, you'll be hitting it more solid straight and shooting those low scores. Well, that's it for the search for today on finding your toe line to make sure you go up to that nice three-quarter limited turn vertical swing, peak performance swing and you'll play better golf and shoot low scores. That's it for today, and I'll be talking with you all again soon.